nine at nine, nine at nine. Oh yes, it's countdown time. Oh boy. Oh what fun it is to see what's going on at nine at nine. Ba ba da ba da ba da. Nine at nine, 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 nine. Let's count it down the line. Oh what fun it is to sing nine, nine at nine. Ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -ba. Yeah, it was festive. Okay. I like that. That was good, yeah. Mm. Number nine here. Let's start with uh, what some people say is a Christmas movie. I say that. Die Hard, right? Christmas movie. Yeah. It is. No, yeah, it is. There is the big scene where Alan Rickman, playing the bad guy, Hans Gruber, falls backwards from a skyscraper. On set, he was actually falling from a height of 25 feet onto an airbag. The plan was to drop him on the count of three, but the stunt coordinator decided instead to drop Rickman at one in order to provoke a more, you know, genuine reaction of shock. It worked, and now it's one of the most iconic scenes in action movie history. Check it out. Okay, That's let's right. discuss. No, no, it's not, it, it, it is a Christmas no, it's movie. Not. No, it's not. Why do you say it's Marcus, not? Marcus, uh, you're late to the party here, but here's the point. If you're <laughs> watching me. Die Hard, if you were die, watching Die Hard at any other time of the year, mm -hmm. it'd be, you'd be fine. You'd be like, That's fine. What? That's not a Christmas movie. You could watch it in June. You could watch it in March. No one would question why you're watching it. But they play that. it on TV during Christmas. So to me, it's no. a Christmas movie. If, you, if I was watching Christmas Vacation or Elf in like June, you'd be like, why are you watching this Christmas movie, OK? Mm -hmm. So, but you can watch Die Hard. That holds up year round. It's an action movie. So, an action movie that takes it's place during Christmas. It's an action equipment. Christmas movie. It's an action movie that takes place during Christmas. So, it's holiday action. You want to split? You want to? Yeah. No, he doesn't even count. I'm not going to count on this. Number one. eight. Call it a snack, accessory, <laughs> if you will. It is a fork that sauces while you dine. A fork that sauces. The Ooh. world's first tube tetchable snack what? accessory that dishes out perfect amounts of joy with every squeeze. <laughs> with what? every squeeze. With I every squeeze. So funny to me. The pinnacle of German engineering. <laughs> the ultimate in tube to tongue technology. Compatible with the entire Tommy tube range. Oh. One small fork for men. One giant squeeze for mankind. All oh. this engineering might seem super unnecessary for a fork, but before the sork, you'd always have leftover sauce on your plate at the end of a meal. Look at huh. this. This is called the Tommy Sork. And uh, squeezy packaging at its finest, thanks to German engineering, the fork attaches to a tube of mustard. Might be unnecessary or necessary during barbecue season, depending how you look at it. I'd give it a try. I think it's brilliant. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder how much they charge for that. Yeah, we Probably get a price on I bet you it's expensive. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Coming in at number seven, the Royals always seem to stir the rumor mill, but word on the street is King Charles gives bizarre gifts. His staff recounts presents they've received and a sense of humor. A former butler says he'd find random items in his locker, like a tin of salmon mm, or <laughs> salt and pepper shakers. Uh, King Charles and Queen Camilla would eventually send what's quote unquote proper gifts. Queen Elizabeth was known to give staffers a helping of Christmas pudding. And if you had Christmas pudding, it's not like pudding over no. here. And a gift card with the value depending on how long they'd worked for the Queen. Okay. This says the Royals departed for this season for their mansion in Norfolk, England. Hmm. All right. Okay. Unusual. Well, at number six, uh, made popular by social media, people will not stop visiting Hanoi's train street. Uh, authorities in Vietnam have tried to shut down one of the city's most popular unofficial tourist spots, but the crowds, they just keep on coming. It is unsafe. Uh, tourists get close to the trains and don't pay attention. The city has resorted to stricter rules for bars and coffee shops along that street. Travel agencies have been told to cut the group tours. The tracks have cut through the neighborhood for more than a century now. I'd love to see it, though. Yikes. Off the close. Number five, here's a great video from the chocolate guy. His name is Amori Guishan, and he's one of the best pastry chefs and chocolatiers in the world. Hey everyone, today I've decided to make a life-size chocolate leopard. As usual, I begin by creating the main volume with my egg shape, then quickly move on to the crafting of all the legs. And to do so, I'm stacking multiple lamination of dark chocolate together to make sure the base will be very sturdy. 
Once the main frame is up, I can start spending time on muscle definition, the paws, and the tail. Once everything has been glued on, I can move on to my favorite part, the making of the face. And when my baby has finally been polished, is ready to be sprayed. On big projects like that, this part can get very messy, so we usually build some kind of crazy plastic room straight out of an episode of a texture. By the end of this, I was fully covered in cocoa butter, but it was totally worth it. I can then move on to create the eyes that will give life and emotion to the leopard. Once they are on and I've added the teeth, the last detail will be crafting the whisker out of pulled sugar and gluing them on one by one using a hot pen. Et voilà, another showpiece is done. It took me four days and a half and around 100 pounds of chocolate to complete the job. When do you eat it? We're all wondering. No. I hope you eat it, otherwise it's such a waste of yeah, chocolate. Yeah. Exactly. How do you realize that you have a talent for this, Good right? Question. Like, I didn't grow up saying, let me make a big yeah, thing of leopard. chocolate yeah. and make... Maybe do what Dean Richards did. You try it and you realize, maybe I'm not so good at this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, you okay. rarely see Dean fail in the kitchen, yeah. but he, no, he's he, talented. That he really did. It's a complete disaster. Yep. Okay. He's the first to admit it. That is true. Okay. Coming in at number four, here's a, look at, here's a look at how it's done by one of the largest and oldest pencil makers in the world. Faber Castile has factories in 10 countries, and this promotional video is pretty mesmerizing. They make about 2 billion pencils a year. When's the last time anyone used a pencil, though? I can still use Let's enjoy this for a second, because... Yeah, it's really amazing. I love these How Do They Make It videos. Oh, it's incredible. They are really amazing. Wax yeah, the bath, chocolate factories and, the like, color. all these candy and... You don't use pencils anymore? I did the other day. It okay. was a carpenter's pencil, one of those flat ones, so it doesn't roll off the yeah. table. My well, daughter's project. a collection of pencils and the sharpener, and we do homework yeah. on that. With the I still use them. But... They have a sharpener in the newsroom, and so I like to go over there and just be yeah. really annoying and sharpen my pencil, <laughs> well, and it makes so you. much noise. That's me. That makes sense now. <laughs> the LEDs, the different colors, and then it's pretty amazing. All right, All right so cool. at number three here, most of us are taught proper manners growing up, most of us. Some rules always seemed arbitrary, though, like why aren't we allowed to put our elbows on the table? Let me explain. Question. Huh. I'm going to go back. It all goes back to uh, the earlier civilizations. Apparently, keeping your arms behind the table prevented violence. People were less likely to start fighting when their hands were kept at their sides. Uh, our place settings, like where we place forks and knives, even act as an imaginary boundary that keeps us behind the table. Oh. Okay. I guess we're still pretty good at that, right? Mm -hmm. I would good never know. put my elbows on the table at dinner. No? I, don't, I can't think of it. But that was good context for us. Good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Number two, it's been three years since Alec Trebek passed away. Here's a little tribute to the late Jeopardy host. Uh, it was put together by Alex Jacob, a six-time Jeopardy winner who also won the Tournament of Champions. Uh, it is super cut of the way Alex says genre. Uh, genres for four. A genre category. This genre of art, this genre of novel, this genre of game, this alliterative <laughs> genre, this fantasy genre, this spooky genre, this popular genre, this six-letter genre, this genre about a low-born scamp, the genre of American local color ballet, the sword and sandal genre, a Japanese cartoon genre, a TV genre, 1970s genre of film, the 60s musical genre, this very American genre genre of music, yeah. king of this <laughs> musical genre, master of this I'm not sure I remember him doing that. He turns it into a one-syllable yeah. word. Yeah. He's Canadian, right? So they genre. mostly speak They say genre, yeah. so it's like a genre. genre. Yeah, genre is good for him. Okay, I like I it. I never hear that word genre. the same way. No? Genre. I'm going to no. start saying it like that. I hope you do. <laughs> I look forward to that. Coming in at number one, here is a classic. A few years ago, back, the Lonely Island guys were on The Tonight Show to promote their movie Pop Star, and they came with a nice surprise prize for Jimmy Fallon. They just finished a press tour and on that tour they played a game to see if they they could slip up Jimmy's name into every interview. Check it out. Okay. So we uh, turned it into a game where we would try and mention you as much as possible without anyone sort of knowing that's what we were doing. Because I knew I was coming here at the end of everything and then I could show it to you. When we'd be writing we'd always say you know it's like Jimmy Fallon always says if you think it Put it in the show. And you know what Jimmy Fallon says? He always says, truth is stranger than not truth. Well, yeah. It's a weird way of phrasing it, but that's Jimmy. Jimmy Fallon has a saying, which is, never f 
on a volcano. He always says that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what Jimmy Fallon says? Dress for the job you want in track suits. Yeah. I haven't heard him say that. But that's <laughs> he says good. it a lot. Yeah, he says it a lot. Well, Jimmy Fallon always says wavelengths are like Earth. Everybody's on the same one. I believe it was Jimmy Fallon who said, never look a gift whale in the mouth. Yeah, which we immediately tried to correct him on, but he was not happy. Yeah, he was, he was furious. I yeah. guess it's hilarious. There's no such thing as a gift whale. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like Jimmy Fallon always says, un elefante no es un perro. Sí. <laughs> well, like Jimmy Fallon always says, you know, um, you can't teach a horse to read Braille. And we try to live by that. It's like Jimmy Fallon always says, always wear your beanie like a Smurf. It's like Jimmy Fallon always says, potato, potato. Jimmy Fallon says that? Andy <laughs> Samberg. Yo soy Jimmy Fallon? They just went all in on this. Wow, that is amazing. Yeah, that is that's impressive. Not easy to do. I imagine you go on these press tours and you're like, you have to entertain yourself somehow because you're asked the same questions <laughs> over, over and over, over again. again. That's for a nice hours, little challenge, yeah. right? Okay. Right. Well, well then, Jimmy Fallon always says, right? <laughs> you're gonna try and that's get on the there. Nine at nine. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. Nine at nine. Genre. 